Hello and welcome to the Starting Death Guard series, the series where we go from your first purchase to your first 2000 point army list and everything in between for the Death Guard forces. In this video we'll be taking a look at the heavy support choices for the Death Guard. And while the Death Guard have many different heavy support choices, especially when you look at the units from Forge World, they actually have a very limited option in terms of what's actually playable in the heavy support. So this might end up being a rather short video. However, before we begin looking at the heavy support choices, I would like to make a note of something that has changed since the previous video, which was the fast attack choices. That being that the Greater Blight Drone has experienced a change in the newest FAQ. No longer does it have the layer cake of an ability known as Nurgle's Gift, but instead it has been replaced to simply have Contagions. This does open up the Blight Drone a lot more, because while it's still probably subpar to the Blood Drone in terms of raw output, it can function as Blood Drones 5 through 6 while also being a faster and different drone option as well. I can see a world where we see some more Blight Drones in the future within high end lists, as they were already fringe playable to some extent, but now they've gained much more utility with that speed, thanks to having the ability to spread those contagions as needed so that other slower units can shoot at those targets much more easily. In either case with that being said, I do think it's a positive change overall, and let's begin looking at the heavy support choices. The number one heavy support choice, and by far the best one, is the Plague Burst Crawler, seeing play in many different lists and coming in at 175 points in its starting loadout. Let's look at what the Plague Burst Crawler has to offer. To begin with, it has a bit of an odd movement at 9 inches, however such a slow movement is typical for the Death Guard, and considering it's called a crawler, it does make sense that it moves a little bit slowly. Then looking at stat line, we begin with its resilience. It has a toughness of 8, 12 wounds, and a 3 plus basic save, as well as a 5 plus invulnerable save, thanks to being a demonic engine. Not only that, but it comes equipped with disgustingly resilient contagions and explodes like all other vehicles. This makes a Plague Burst Crawler surprisingly tanky comparatively to a lot of other options. Now the tankiness isn't the only thing that makes a Plague Burst Crawler so interesting thing, as in fact it has a reasonable ballistic skill of 3+, plus and comes with an array of very interesting weapons. The basic loadout comes with a Plague Burst Mortar that has a 40 inch range, heavy D6 shots, which means you'll on average gain 3-4 to four shots, and a strength of 8. Not only that, but it comes with 2 armor penetration and 2 damage as well as being a plague weapon, though the most important thing about this mortar weapon is that it ignores line of sight, and line of sight ignoring is an incredibly powerful ability within the 40k 9th edition universe. Now on top of that rather heavy hitting mortar, that can do extensive damage to units hiding behind terrain, it also has two entropy cannons, which have a 36 inch range, one heavy shot each, and a strength of 8, 4 armor penetration, and D3 plus 3 damage. This makes them a rather powerful LAS cannon that has a very smooth damage comparatively to other LAS cannons that only have a D6 damage, making them much more swingy. Even though they have the same top end damage, the entropy cannons will on average do 5 damage, whereas a regular LAS cannon will do 3 to 4 damage. Not only that, but it's also a plague weapon which makes it more consistent. And finally, the Plague Burst Crawler comes with one additional weapon, which is a heavy slugger and has a 36 inch range with heavy 4 shots, strength 5, 1 armor penetration, and 1 damage. The heavy slugger really isn't that impressive comparatively to the other two weapons, but it's a few extra shots as needed and can help within melee if the Plague Burst Crawler does get locked up as otherwise it only have two entropy cannon shots due to the mortar weapon having a blast profile and being able to shoot within close combat. A few things to mention about the Plague Burst Crawler weapons is that it can swap out some of the weapons for other options. The first weapon it could swap out is those two entropy cannons in exchange for two Plague Spitters. The Plague Spitters have a 12 inch range, assault these six shots, and a strength of six, as well as one armor penetration and one damage per shot. This is also a plague weapon and it auto hits like a flamer. If you replace entropy cannons with the plague spitters, this reduces the cost of the crawler to 165 points and could be a choice in some situations if you need the points, as well as if you expect the crawler to be trapped in combat often and as such will need to shoot its way out. Otherwise, it's just best to go with the entropy cannons, which have more synergy with the mortar. However, the plague spitters do benefit from the contagions at close range, which is at least something that's going in favor of the plague spitters. One other weapon it can swap out is the heavy slogger, and it can swap out the heavy slugger with a rod hail volley gun. The rod hail volley gun has has a 24 inch range and has a profile of 3 rapid shots, a strength of 6, 1 armor penetration and 1 damage. The Rod Hail Volley Gun can be better than the Slogger in some cases and should be taken if you're taking the Plague Spitters on your Plague Burst Crawler. It's definitely better at close range than the Heavy Slogger considering it'll have more shots and more strength in half range. In terms of stratagems, the Plague Burst Crawler is the only vehicle in the heavy support that not only has access to the basic Death Guard stratagems that all vehicles have, but has a unique stratagem known as Disgusting Force. And what Disgusting Force does is for one command point, you can select a Plague Burst Crawler, and that crawler's mortar goes up to 3 damage instead of 2. 
Not only that, but the Plague Burst Crawler that is selected gains one other ability. That ability being once the Crawler has shot, select one enemy unit that was hit by at least one of its attacks. Each unit within 3 inches that isn't a Nurgle unit suffers one mortal wound on a roll of 4 plus on a d6. This can actually do some decent work if your opponent has many small units clustered around one specific target. However, at the same time, this can just be a minor perk considering that most of the time you're going to be using this to get that one extra point of damage per shot, and that damage can quickly add up depending on how many hits you make. To conclude the Plague Burst Crawler, it is a very strong model with a solid durability as well as having a heavy output with two entropy cannons and a mortar. At the same time, it has the option to fight its way out of close combat with an alternative but weaker range weapon profile, though don't discount that weaker loadout because sometimes it makes sense to take at least one Plague Burst Crawler with those weapons in order to protect your other Plague Burst Crawlers from melee attacks. Additionally, having line of sight ignoring options is very big as it can allow you to take out enemies hiding behind train that are trying to hold objectives, perform actions, and so forth. More so as there aren't that many great heavy options in Death Guard and the crawler is very strong, it's very easy to include multiple crawlers in a list, giving you a ton of rather heavy indirect fire that can become even heavier with that stratagem. So as a whole, it is very easy to include multiple plague burst crawlers and have them shoot at one target with their line of sight ignoring weapons, as well as shooting their entropy cannons to do heavy damage against any armor target. Target. And as a result of how durable and powerful this unit is, it's no surprise that you'll see two to three of these in many Death Guard lists, especially ones that have done very well within tournaments. In second place, we have the Death Guard Defiler, and probably the only option that can directly compete with the Plague Burst Crawler. Although, even with that in mind, it is a little bit too pricey for the most part. So let's look at what the Defiler has to offer. Coming in at 180 points with its starting loadout, it has a reasonable stat profile with 8 inches of movement, a 3 plus weapon skill and ballistic skill, as well as a strength of 8, a toughness of 7, 14 wounds, and 5 attacks, as well as having a 3 plus normal save and a 5 plus vulnerable save thanks to being a demonic engine. The one thing to consider about this profile is that the lower toughness makes it awkward, but it does have a reasonable save, both normal and invulnerable, and it does have an ability that allows it to regain one wound in the command phase, which is known as the Infernal Regeneration. Not only that, but the Defiler also has access to the Demonic Gluttony ability, which allows it to regain even more wounds, making it a bit more durable as well. That being said, sadly it doesn't have the Disgusting Resilient ability for whatever reason, and that really harms the survivability, but at least it has Contagions, which does help its rather powerful melee abilities, although the Contagions are not as vital to its success and with the blast profile as well as the massive strength on its melee weapons I'd much rather have a disgustingly resilient ability than the contagions though you can't have everything and unfortunately I would say the disgustingly resilient ability being missing on the defiler is one of the defining features as to why it doesn't see more play now let's take a look at the different weapon profiles that the defiler can have as it's a very modular unit that can have all kinds of weapons attached to begin with there are two static weapons that the defiler always comes with the first being the defiler cannon which has an impressive range at 72 inches d6 heavy shots and a strength of 8 as well as 2 armor penetration and 3 damage. It does have a blast profile so it cannot be shot within melee combat, and while it's very comparable to the mortar weapon on the Plague Burst Crawler, the one problem it does have is that it does not ignore line of sight, although it has a much longer range and a bit better damage. Now in addition to that Defiler Cannon, it also comes with a rather powerful melee weapon, being the Defiler Claws, and the Defiler Claws double its strength, making it a strength of 16, as well as giving it 3 armor penetration and a damage profile of D6. This means in total, it'll make 5 rather powerful attacks and it is a vehicle, so it is able to shoot some of its weapons within combat as long as they are not blast weapons. After these two static weapons, it does have several optional weapons, those optional weapons being two sets of optional weapons that you must take at least one of, and then a third set of optional weapons that you don't have to take any of. The first set of optional weapons that you must take at least one of begins with the Reaper Auto Cannon, which comes baseline, and the Reaper Auto Cannon is rather powerful and, and probably the best option considering it does not increase the points at all while giving it a bit of good shooting. The second option is a Twent Heavy Bolter for 10 points, which is a bit odd considering that the Reaper Auto Cannon is probably very comparable to it, and this is more of a side grade than an upgrade. So when it comes down between the Reaper Auto Cannon and the Twent Heavy Bolter, I'll definitely say the Reaper Auto Cannon does win out simply for being less points. The third option is is one that you may consider which is a twin last cannon coming in at 20 points for that twin last cannon it's definitely something that's very interesting considering it's not that expensive for what you get although that being said the defiler is a rather expensive unit as you've seen already and increasing the points by another 20 points can be rather daunting so it's definitely something that can be left off as well because the reaper auto cannon is definitely not bad by any means 
Now the second set of optional weapons that you must take at least one of begins with the Twin Heavy Flamer, which costs 15 points, and while this is an alright option, it is rather pricey, so I'd say it's probably better to swap this out for one of the other ones, as the Defiler has a decent enough melee profile and can deal with most threats in short range. Though that being said, there is some consideration for this weapon. As the Defiler has a rather strong attack profile, it does have a limited number of attacks, so armies with swarm options can trap the Defiler within combat, but if you have a Twin Heavy Flamer, you can definitely burst your way out of combat very easily. The second choice of these weapons is the Defiler Scourge, and the Defiler Scourge is one that I think is very interesting and only costs 10 points instead of 15 points like the Flamers. What the Defiler Scourge is, is it's an extra melee weapon, and it gives you an additional 4 strength when making attacks with it, as well as 2 armor penetration and 2 damage per attack. If this is all it gave you, this would not be that particularly interesting of a weapon, however it does add 3 additional attacks with this weapon, meaning that you get 5 attacks from the Claws and then 3 additional weapons from the Scourge. You can definitely make the Defiler a very serious melee threat against large targets by using these two weapons in combination. In addition, don't forget that Reaper Auto Cannon can still be shot within close combat. Now the third and final option would be the Havoc Launcher, which costs 0 points and is a rather weak option. However, it does bring the Defiler down to 165 points, while it still retains that Defiler Cannon, Claws, and that Reaper Auto Cannon, meaning that it has a lot of shooting they can do and is comparable to that Plague Burst Crawler in many ways. The third and final option, which is completely optional, is to take an additional weapon on the Defiler. These additional weapons come in the form of combi weapons, being a combi bolter, flamer, melta, or plasma. I'd say that the flamer and the melta are probably the best options if you take any of these. 10 points when taking one of these, it does make it a little more awkward considering how expensive the Defiler is. Then again, that flamer profile is not necessarily bad, especially if you've taken a Defiler Scourge and reduced your ability to fight out of swarm units. In conclusion, the Defilers are very versatile and can be equipped with all kinds of weapons, making them have a point range from 165 points to 210 points for the Defiler, while also having the ability to fight both at range as well as melee to great success. However, having blast weapons does make the melee a bit more awkward, and the cost can get out of hand rather quickly, not to mention that the lack of disgusting resilience really does harm the survivability of the Defiler. I can see the Defiler showing up in a list where it either functions as a low-cost melee monster that provides some shooting on the way in, or as a high-point cost heavy gun platform that can't be easily bogged down in melee combat either thanks to the ability to take those last cannons and the Defiler Cannon, as well as the Reaper Auto Cannon. That being said, it's still rather tough to beat out the Plague Burst Crawler, which is much more focused, offers the unique ability to negate line of sight, and has a much more durable stat line in the long run. Though if any heavy support can see play in a pure Death Guard Codex list, either in place or beside the Plague Burst Crawler, it would be the Defiler, who is just on the cusp of being good enough as is. More so, I can definitely see a world where the Defiler shows up if he gets a minor points reduction or is afforded that ability of being disgustingly resilient. Now in 3rd place and 4th place are two different variants of the Predator tank, and to give them a distinction, I'd say 3rd place goes to the Predator Annihilator, which comes in at 130 points baseline and has a rather mediocre stat line, with a 12 inch movement, 3 plus ballistic skill, toughness 7, 11 wounds, and a 3 plus save. Do note, however, that it does not have an invulnerable save, unlike the Plague Burst Crawler and the Defiler. More so, it does not have Disgustingly Resilient either, but does have Contagions like the Defiler. This is already a rather bad start for the Annihilator, but let's look at the different weapon options that it does come with. To begin with, it always comes with a static weapon, being the twin last cannon, which has a 48 inch range, two heavy shots, and a strength of 9, as well as three armor penetration. However, its damage is a D6, meaning that it has a lower average and much more variance than the D3 plus 3 entropy cannons on the Plague Burst Crawler. So already you have a much less durable stat profile, as well as a much weaker shooting profile for 130 points. However, it has two optional heavy guns that it can take. The first being two last cannons, which essentially gives it a second twin last cannon, and brings up the total point cost of the Annihilator to 170 points. And the second heavy weapon option that it can take is two heavy bolters, bringing it up to 160 points. Now, the heavy bolters don't really make that much sense, as it doesn't do that much, and for 10 points more you get those two last cannons instead. So I'd definitely say the heavy bolters aren't really an option at the points cost that they currently come in. At. There is a second optional weapons profile being the combi weapons and the havoc launcher. Once again, these aren't particularly impressive, especially with the long range of the last cannons, considering that the predators don't want to be within close range, unlike the defiler, which can easily come into close range and put out some pain. And the annihilator really doesn't need much more to be said about it, as it's just too expensive and doesn't really do anything that the plague burst crawler or the defiler can't do better for the same amount of points with a better body and way more options. The predator bodies as a whole either need a massive points reduction or to be given something that makes them stay stand out more. Maybe if they had some kind of unique stratagem or ability, it can boost them enough to be playable, but it'll generally come down to the Plague Burst Crawler being so much better that it's hard to take a Predator, and even if you wanted to take a Predator, why not just take a Defiler as an additional heavy support option? All in all, the Predators are just too expensive for what they do. 
to quickly cover in fourth place the Predator Destructor, I will say this, it does seem like it's way worse than the Annihilator in my opinion. To begin with, it comes in at 140 points, which is 10 points more than the Annihilator, and it has the same stat profile as the Predator Annihilator, while also having the same optional weapon options, and the only differentiation you get for that 10 point difference is the turret that's mounted on top of it. Instead of coming with a twin last can like the Predator Annihilator, the Predator Destructor comes with a Predator Auto Cannon, which has a 48 inch range, a shooting profile of 2d3 heavy shots, which will on average give you 4 shots with this weapon. The strength profile of this weapon is only strength 7 and has 1 armor penetration as well as 3 damage per shot. The 3 damage is nice but the higher price really doesn't make sense as the last can on average will have more damage and the higher strength as well as the armor penetration makes it much easier to push through damage with the last cannons. I just don't really understand the pricing of this unit considering even at the high end the Plague Burst Crawler costs 175 points while the Predator Destructor ends up costing you 180 points if you take 2 last cannons as its optional weapon and I don't think the Plague Burst Crawler should see a points increase but rather I'd like to see the Predator Destructor see a points decrease. Coming in at 5th place and a unit that's actually way worse than the Predators is the Land Raider. The Land Raider costs 285 points within the Codex and has potentially seen a points reduction to 265 points within the new chapter approved points ratings. In either case, neither of those points values are particularly attractive for what you get with the Land Raider. Let's look at the stat profile of the Land Raider. It comes with a 10 inch movement, a 3 plus ballistic skill, a toughness of 8, and 16 wounds. It does have a 2 plus normal save but no invulnerable save and does not benefit from disgustingly resilient though it does have one other thing that the Land Raider can do is it can transport 10 bubonic Astartes infantry including possessed and terminators who take up 2 slots when being transported, meaning that you're limited to a total of 5 possessed or 5 terminators if you're transporting them. While it's nice to be able to transport those possessed, the terminators can teleport in, making the Land Raider much less relevant, and for the amount of points that the Land Raider costs, there are easier ways to get possessed into combat. Really the problem is, is that the Land Raider is not durable, and the best part is you can just take a combat plasma on the Land Raider and blow it up yourself to save your opponent the trouble because this unit really doesn't have the durability needed and the Plague Burst Crawler will survive much more easily than the Land Raider, which is surprising considering the Land Raider is supposed to be a fortress. So what's really the point of the Land Raider? I don't really know, because it's not durable enough to be a fortress transport and it doesn't really compare to anything like the Defiler or the Plague Burst Crawler, though it does come with some heavy firepower being two twin last cans, one heavy bolter, and it can take those combat weapons or a Havoc launcher. But that being said, even if it is 265 points, would you really pay that over the 170 points of the Predator? Or Annihilator, I'd say you probably wouldn't, and for good reason. I will say I like the theme of the Land Raider being that fortress tank, but as it stands now in the game, it just doesn't have the stat line to make that a reality, and as such, it just falls flat of its functionality. Considering that tanks with much more firepower have much more survivability than the Land Raider, it really puts Land Raider in a bad light, and as a unit, you should definitely avoid. And if you simply like the model, there's no shame in owning a model that you simply paint and enjoy looking at. Maybe at some point in the future, there will be some use for the Land Raider, but as it stands now, I really doubt you would field one of these, considering how much it costs, and really, it can cost 170 points like the Predator Annihilator and it would still be just fine. With the first 5 options covered, that covers all of the heavy support options within the Death Guard Codex proper. However, Death Guard does have plenty of options from the Forge World line. The majority of these options I don't believe are worthwhile, and for the most part they are too expensive while having similar profiles as the Predator tanks and being more expensive while also requiring command points to take in some cases in addition to their normal points. So as such, I'll save some time by not going over them specifically, but if you guys have found any uses for those tanks, please do mention them in the comments below, as it'll be interesting to hear what people came up with some of those tanks from the Forge World line. Though I'll mention there is one unit that is a bit interesting from the Forge World line, that being the Death Guard Rapier Carrier. And what this is, it's basically a turret that has a slow mobility at 4 inches, a 3 plus ballistic skill, a toughness of 5, 5 wounds, and a 3 plus normal save. As this heavy weapon choice is essentially a slightly mobile turret, it cannot charge or heroically intervene or anything of that nature. However, what it does bring to the table is that for 75 points, you can get quite a few different guns on it and you can upgrade those guns. Though for the most part, I don't think any of those upgrades are particularly great. That being said, for those 75 points, you can gain 12 heavy bolter shots. And while I'm not sold on this, gaining 12 heavy bolter shots in Death Guard can be fun, as Death Guard don't have access to profiles such as this for this cheap. The thing that probably keeps this from seeing play is the low mobility and very squishy profile, as it's hard to hide because of the bad mobility, while at the same time your opponent can probably really easily blow this up considering it has about the same stats as a normal Plague Marine. In either case, it's something to keep in mind if you ever find you really want the firepower that it offers for the low price that it offers, and don't mind bringing that fragile body to the table. Though with that being said, do remember how fragile this unit really is, but at the very least, considering it's still a vehicle, it can fire within close combat, which at least keeps it from being swarmed too easily. However, if it does end up being attacked in melee combat, it will probably be destroyed, 
Anyway, as always, if you've enjoyed the content, please remember to like and subscribe as it really does help the channel out. And if you know anyone who can benefit from this video or any of the other videos on my channel, please do share the content as it can help other players out in terms of buying and building an army. And as always, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons for supporting the channel. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome people. And regardless, if you're a patron or not, thank you for watching and have a great day. See you next time. Bye.